As a father, I love my family. My family is the greatest thing. In my father, I love my son. My son, good. Son, good, do nothing. Good son, I would do anything for my- Gains! Max Gains! Rise and grind! Nah, bro. Doc says I have low T. It's cool. Hello? No, I'm already on my way. No, I can't. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I understand, but- I would kill for my son. As a father, as a father, as a father, I have wireless cameras on my house, on all of my property, uh, my property, my property, my property, my land. I love my son family sports. I win at sports! Sports! I never get tired. I ate out my principal on both ends. What? I'm the greatest. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. My team isn't leaving Boyertown until 4.30 at the earliest. Well, I don't know what to tell you. As a father... I'm the greatest! As a father... Balls! Family, 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 family... I don't know what to tell you. I gotta go. Everybody likes the thing where you say, you, 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 how about a hoodie, and then you walk out with a you know, GTR. Everybody likes it, everybody needs it, it's this popular thing to do, and who am I to fight against the riverbed, so let's do a thing where you buy my hat, or maybe you can get in a mug, and then you walk away with the thing that's the basis of this thing you're watching. It's a car giveaway. How about it? You like it. You can get on sign. I'll meet you in my room and then maybe. How about you win a car? This is one of those giveaways where you buy a small thing and end up with my big thing. Everybody needs some time in their life where they don't know. But the anticipation is something else. Car giveaway. Money, 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 money. Money! This is as high as I go for the car giveaway! I think if I go this high and talk about the car giveaway, this is a bunch of B-roll, but I think we're using it in the main thing. Ah, cars! Everybody, you get a hoodie and then you get a place where you can touch yourself inside the garage. Click the link in the description and get notified when we release our first car giveaway. Not sure what it's going to be. I'm just letting you know right now. 2000 Ford F250 7.3 Power Stroke Super Duty. This is the last of the tradesman's diesel pickups. The year 2000 was still technically the 90s, culturally. And as such, SUVs were the luxury flex vehicles. Full-size pickup trucks hadn't yet made the turn to full-on luxury vehicles yet. This is, by 2021 standards... A very sparse interior. You have a parts bin steering wheel, a black light bright paper background to the instrument cluster, and the same furred heating and ventilation controls from the 90s. Your electric 4x4 switch, Ford didn't even try to center it in the dash bezel. It has a coin holder because food trucks were cash only businesses back then. Oh, a pillar pods. Who exactly are you racing in your power stroke me off? A school bus? What do we got here? We got transmission temperature, boost pressure, and exhaust temperature. The boost gauge is the only one I care to watch, and most of the time, it doesn't move! How do you like that? You finally get a turbo diesel truck, only to find out it doesn't spool under normal conditions. The 7.3 Power Stroke Me at a medium pace turbo is for towing and moving piles of scrap up to Danville. Poking along on state highways unladen doesn't move enough exhaust gas through the turbine to compress the intake much past one pound per square inch. You can make it build pressure by flooring it like an unsupervised apprentice, and even doing that, the most you may see is 10 psi. I rolled into it long enough just to see above 12. And there's no Toyota SW20 turbo surge here. When you're on boost, it just feels like the truck gets lighter. The blandness of the Ford power stroking it in the bathroom during Thanksgiving while the meal is still going on explains how the Cummins is seen as exciting. A Dodge Cummins sounds like a horny Wookiee. A power stroke sounds like a school bus. Ford F-250 diesel. The official truck of plowing for 31 hours on a thermos full of 5-hour energy and dissolved dick pills.
A Duramax is a father trapped in the intimate suspense of whether his son will grow up to disappoint him or he'll grow up to disappoint others as God intended. A Cummins dates an Applebee's waitress and dreams of a way to sexually transmit his gains. An F-250 recognizes that while there are those who glamorize the nobility of work, there are just as many who skip the pat on the back and just go out there and do it. Ford F-250 Super Duty. When calluses become patina. A firm layer of character that comes from age and exertion. We're in a golden age for the resentment of effort, yet the Super Duty chugs along, turning the world through the torque of its struggle. This truck runs on the 7.3 liter Power Stroke diesel V8, and it came to Bill after a lengthy search to find this very engine in working condition. From what we found, this was Ford's take on the Navistar T444 E turbo diesel V8 intended to replace the 7.3 liter IDI V8. Not only would it be the first engine to bear the Power Stroke Me and Smile name, it would develop a reputation for dependability over its lifespan from 1993 to 2003. This 7.3 liter Power Stroke Me Not So Hard diesel V8 makes 250 horsepower and 505 pound feet of torque, made into a four speed automatic transmission. Bill has owned this truck for eight years, and it currently sits at only 119,000 miles. It's been a steady, reliable truck, but mostly because Bill has kept up with the maintenance and quality of life improvements. The torque converter went to hell shortly after he bought the truck, so he replaced that immediately. And then he replaced the rear leaf springs due to some cracking. And then the, tr then the entire truck shut down completely due to a frayed wire from the IPR valve. The ignition pressure regulator in the power stroke me with the curtains open and the lights on helps control high pressure oil for the diesel injectors. So something as small as the frayed wire on the IPR valve becomes super important when you're trying to just keep up with basic operation. If anything, when a truck is sidelined by a problem so small and difficult to pinpoint, it illustrates just how precarious the functioning of any vehicle is. But for Bill, this is his nice truck. He has an F-150 as a daily beater. Now, the previous owner of this F-250 was a neat freak, and Bill has kept up that maintenance tradition, which is why this is one of the nicer examples of a 2000 F-250 we've seen. And before you ask, yes, Bill uses this truck for actual truck purposes. He's not just going out here trying to look like a working man in working pants and a high-vis shirt and a brow furrowed by the business of working. Among many other things, he uses this to tow lawn care equipment for his side hustle. And so the bed from a 2015 model could theoretically bolt onto the frame. And so could the headlights from a 2004 model. And anything you can't get from a Ford product, you can just mix and match yourself. This is Yokohama Geolander XAT tires because the previous Duratrax were crazy loud. It has knockoff 2011 tow mirrors. Either got them from eBay or Alibaba, not sure along with jerry-rigged fog lights that are actually factory but had some trouble fitting in. But there were still issues. Uh, for one, the factory-rated tow capacity of the F-250 with the diesel, they say it's 13 to 14 and a half thousand pounds, but Bill's ballpark is around 12,000 pounds. Meanwhile, the fuel economy is mysteriously getting worse to the point Bill has started tracking it. This was once a truck that was able to give him 28 miles per gallon on the highway, but now it's been getting like 8 to 13, with no indication why. No fuel injector or oil issues or anything really apparent. Set your alarm. It's time to start the new semester. Welcome back to Literary Criticism. So ignore your syllabus and open your books. Turn to chapter 37 of this $700 textbook that I wrote that we'll be using this one time. Yes, we're going back to the schools of literary theory and criticism. Ah, this is a wonderful class for 8.30 in the morning. I soaked a ho-ho in espresso and shoved it up my butt, but you do you. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the dueling structures of moral criticism versus dramatic construction. Professor, mm. you said it wrong. As filtered through the lens of this pickup truck. That's for the man whose job leaves him so tired he can't fall asleep at night. The bone weariness of manual labor and the passing out on a recliner to watch the late local, late local news because this is the only place 
Uh, goods night, goods nice, re- good night, good night, good night. Ah, I wrote this all in the syllabus. A good night's rest can happen. You wake up at 4 a.m. to the sounds of paid advertising for a motorized wheelchair you'll need in 20 years that your insurance won't cover. You'll think back softly to the days before GoFundMe became a healthcare provider. I see your hand. I will get to your question. And your Ford F-250 did everything you needed to, uh, to do the strength of its power stroke diesel, yes. We've talked uh, before last semester about how the American pickup truck gets romanticized as a symbol of freedom and patriotism, ignoring all the evidence of its basic function as a work vehicle. I will now teach the rest of this lecture without blowing my nose and silently farting, but you'll figure out in a few weeks that every time I lean on a desk like this, raise my leg, that's me letting them slip. I hope you like onions, I eat them with every meal. This is the essential divide between moral criticism and dramatic construction as we understand it. Moral criticism was basically a concept by Plato which was criticized, which criticized art through its moral value to society. That art only serves a purpose if it enriches the morals and values of the people who consume it. Because if art is going to imitate life, it should imitate a productive one. If moral criticism was a podcast, it would be Dan Carlin's hardcore history. But dramatic construction is where Aristotle argues that the purpose of art is to provide enjoyment rather than any sort of instruction or message. If dramatic construction were a podcast, it would be come town. Anyway, moral criticism would take a look at something like this truck and ask, this is fine, but what is the American pickup truck actually telling us about society? How will it enrich us? And the answer is that a pickup truck, despite arguably being a less effective option than a Chevy Express van, is an ideal work vehicle for the transportation of materials that will allow the worker to provide a service, thus enriching society through labor. The art of the pickup truck is its role as a monument to the concept of manual labor, that this work is valuable, that others can see it being performed, and perhaps make the decision to enrich their lives in the same way. Now, on the other hand, the dramatic construction side of the argument calls to mind a viral Twitter thread from July. Yes, I know it's probably cringe by now, but that's been circulating around car forums for the past couple of weeks that cites a survey claiming that 75% of pickup truck owners only tow something once a year, tops. And also, 75% go off-roading only once per year, with over a third of truck owners only using the bed of the truck once in the calendar year. The thesis seems to be that people who drive pickup trucks use them as daily drivers and rarely for any towing or hauling purposes. And if they were honest with themselves, they'd be better served by getting something smaller. Yes, I see your hand. Yep, Toyota Corolla. It follows along the vanity argument of people buying pickup trucks for no other reason that they want to buy a pickup truck and to modify that pickup truck with all sorts of add-ons that make it heavier to where it becomes less capable of towing effectively. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, it's their right to do that. Yes, that's valid. But it comes ultimately down to the simple argument posed by dramatic construction. Is the artistic value of a truck in the function it provides for society or can its artistic value be found in simply what it offers for enjoyment's sake? To your point that you asked, yes, it's their right to do that. So let me be clear. Yes, I see your hand. I think I'm already going to answer your question. Yes, it's okay to enjoy things for their own sake. It's okay to enjoy things for what they do and how they make you feel. Even if the thing you enjoy amounts to a costume that papers over the day-to-day individual. But I wouldn't suggest driving a Ford F-250 Super Duty for the sake of its appearances. Your hair won't be any thicker on top or down below. Your voice won't have that Sam Elliott huskiness to it. And your stars and bars won't be any brighter than the next guy. And your palms won't have the topography of a farmer who hand tills its own soil. At the end of the day, you're still you, big truck or not. But if you get enjoyment, out of what the truck provides you outside of the practicality of its function, then at least that's honest. 
especially in a time where honesty feels like a hard-won virtue. Yeah, I hear your backpack zippers. I know it's a time to go. So to wrap this up, in the battle between moral criticism and dramatic construction, what? Composition. Have I been saying construction this whole time? Thank you for correcting me. Five extra credit points. Well, well, he was the first one to say it. Congratulations, doing a great job. Dramatic composition. Yes, I do have a degree in this. You want me to write it down? Yeah, all right, I'll get the book. I'll make a note to myself. Yeah. Five extra credit points. In the battle between moral criticism and dramatic composition, the answer is probably somewhere in the middle. Because to enjoy art requires that it do more. Was that your hand in the beginning when I said dramatic construction, not dramatic composition? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for ignoring you. Yes. Yes. You did. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's two minutes after. Okay. Because to enjoy art, if you, if you remember nothing else, remember this, because to enjoy art requires that it do more than lecture us, yet also offer more than surface level gratification. I can tell you're gratified. You caught me in that. Yeah. Busting a nut is great, but you have to be able to live with the post nut clarity. Thank you for sticking around. I'll see you next week. No more she speaks of a high ace van with F-250 keys in her hand. So work some more for our public good unless that view misunderstood unless that views misunderstood unless that views misunderstood